This is a video lesson on the treatment of water hardness, sources of water hardness, complications associated with hard water, and treatment objectives of water softening are all explored. Upon completion of this video, it is recommended that students conduct the water treatment activity attached with the associated lesson plan. Andy Long is the original creator of this lesson plan, and modifications were done by Derek Smetzer. This video was made possible through the NSF-funded Photo Knowledge in the Science Classroom Project at Ohio University. To begin this lesson, we will perform a simple experiment to invest investigate water hardness. Split into six equal groups, each with their own plastic water bottle, and designate your group as either A, B, C, D, E, or F as assigned by your instructor. Each group will add 100 milliliters of water and or chemical to their bottle as follows. Group A will add 100 milliliters of distilled water, B will add 100 milliliters of spring water, C will add 100 milliliters of tap water, D will add 100 milliliters of locally sourced river water, E will add 100 milligrams of calcium chloride to 100 milliliters of distilled water, and F will add 200 milligrams of calcium chloride to 100 milliliters of distilled water. For groups adding calcium chloride, swirl the bottle until all calcium chloride is dissolved. Once you have filled your bottle, add two drops of soap using a disposable pipette. Now shake your bottle for 10 seconds, which makes sure you produce the most bubbles. Pause the video and discuss the results of your experiment, noting any general trends that you observed. At the conclusion of this experiment, you should have noticed that the sources of water with more stuff should have produced the least amount of suds. The bottles with added calcium chloride should have produced less lather than bottles with only distilled water and spring water. The lather in the tap water and river water will ultimately vary depending on the overall quality of the source water. You may want to ask your local water treatment plant for a water quality report to confirm any suspicions on the tap water sample. Water quality reports are generally available online and include information about the source of your drinking water as well as the quality of the water as it reaches your home. Now that we have seen the effects of water hardness firsthand, you may be wondering what it is exactly. Water hardness is defined as the relative concentration of multivalent metallic ions in water. Calcium and magnesium ions account for a large percentage of water hardness, so we are usually more concerned with them. Other species, such as iron, strontium, and manganese, behave similarly to calcium and, ma and magnesium, but are not as much of a concern at comparatively lower concentrations. These other trace metals are more easily removed using different methods than those employed for the treatment of calcium and magnesium hardness. Water hardness is typically reported in milligrams per liter as calcium carbonate, which is also how we measure alkalinity and acidity. Milligrams per liter as calcium carbonate is an equivalent measurement and can be found using equivalent weight relationships. Hardness is also sometimes stated in grams per gallon. This method of measurement may seem confusing. Why would we use milligrams per liter as calcium carbonate to measure a magnesium concentration when it is not even part of the compound? But we'll see later on why this measurement can be useful. We saw in our experiment how soap is affected by water hardness. The lathering action of soap is an indicator of how hard your water is. The harder the water source, the harder it is to wash clothes or dishes. If you've ever bathed in hard water, you may notice a thin film covering your body, which tends to dry out your skin. Soaps and detergents are part of a class of chemicals called surfactants, which are composed of a charged hydrophilic head and an uncharged hydrophobic tail. Surfactants work by surrounding insoluble particles, such as grease, with the hydrophobic tail and forcibly pulling it into solution. Hard water constituents bind to the hydrophobic end of surfactant molecules and reduce their effectiveness. The calcium chloride we added to the E and F water bottles produced harder water, and this ended up diminishing the lathering action of the soap. More soap is actually needed to clean in hard water as opposed to soft water. Besides reducing the performance of soaps and detergents, over time, hard water forms calcium carbonate buildup or soap scale on fixtures and within water distribution lines. Calcium buildup is also accelerated in the presence of heat. This reduces heat transfer efficiency in hot water heaters, resulting in increased costs for heating applications. High concentrations of iron or manganese hardness causes staining of clothes and appliances, while also contributing a foul taste to drinking water. 
For these reasons, water treatment plants will typically remove hardness to ex levels acceptable for consumer applications. It is important for water treatment plant operators to distinguish between different hardness species as they require different removal methods. There are four basic classifications of water hardness, calcium and magnesium hardness, and carbonate and non-carbonate hardness. Total hardness may be expressed as a sum of calcium and magnesium hardness or as a sum of carbonate and non-carbonate hardness. These groupings overlap as we will soon see. A further breakdown of the hardness types is shown here. Carbonate hardness is any hardness which is associated with alkalinity anions. These include carbonate, CO3-2-, bicarbonate, HCO3-, and hydroxide products of calcium and magnesium. Non-carbonate hardness is associated with other anions, which typically include sulfate and chloride products of calcium and magnesium. In the left-hand column, carbonate hardness species include calcium and magnesium carbonate, calcium and magnesium bicarbonate, and calcium and magnesium hydroxide. In the right-hand column, non-carbonate hardness species include calcium and magnesium sulfate and calcium and magnesium chloride. So where do the hardness species come from? Natural sources of calcium and magnesium are predominantly rocks and minerals. Calcium is found in limestone and dolomite deposits, and magnesium is also found in dolomite. Both of these rocks are carbonate-bearing. Essentially, all calcium or magnesium-bearing rocks and soils can potentially impart hardness to water. The classic image of stalactites and stalagmites in caves are the result of the dissolution and subsequent precipitation of calcium carbonate from limestone. Caves are carved out through the weathering of limestone by water over many years. Calcium and magnesium are present in nearly all water sources, but for the most part, groundwater sources boast the largest concentrations of these hardness species. Runoff from rain events infiltrates into the ground and dissolves calcium and magnesium from bedrock and soil deposits. Highly acidic rainwater will dissolve calcium and magnesium ions at a higher rate. If you get your drinking water from a well, chances are it is moderately hard water. In this case, you might have a water softening unit at home to treat hardness to acceptable levels before using it. Hardness is closely related to alkalinity, so it is important to understand both of these water parameters and how they work for and against each other. The image here depicts the carbonic acid slash bicarbonate buffering system in natural waters. Water vapor in the atmosphere is naturally acidic due to saturation with carbon dioxide. When carbon dioxide gas is dissolved in water, it forms carbonic acid, H2CO3, which is a weak acid. Carbonic acid, bicarbonate, and carbonate are all interrelated, and depending on the pH of the water source, different forms of these species are present in solution. Under basic conditions, more carbonate is present, and under acidic conditions, more carbonic acid is present. Alkalinity is a property of water which describes its ability to neutralize acids. These carbon species impart the bulk of alkalinity to natural water sources. Most water sources are around a neutral pH, so bicarbonate is the predominant alkalinity species present. To describe this process further, consider the following. If you were to slowly add a strong acid to a beaker containing dissolved calcium carbonate in water, that is, water containing calcium and carbonate ions, the carbonate ions would first protonate to bicarbonate, then again to carbonic acid as the pH drops below 4.5. If you were then to take this beaker and add a base like calcium hydroxide, the carbonic acid would deprotonate to bicarbonate, then to carbonate, and finally precipitate out of solution as calcium carbonate above a pH of 7.6. We use these same principles when treating water hardness. By increasing the pH of the water, calcium ions are able to precipitate out as insoluble calcium carbonate. The overall goal of treatment, termed water softening, is to reduce the total hardness of a source water to less than 80 mg per liter as cal calcium carbonate and reduce magnesium hardness to less than 40 mg per liter as calcium carbonate to minimize scaling at elevated temperatures. This treatment would classify as moderately hard water according to the accompanying chart. In many cases, total hardness is allowed to approach 110 to 150 mg per liter as calcium carbonate. Lower standards like these are followed when a municipality wishes to reduce treatment costs and sludge production from the chemical softening additions. 
There are no set standards for treatment of hardness as it is not technically a health hazard, but 80 milligrams per liter as calcium carbonate is considered to be a satisfactory hardness level for most consumers. Treatment of hardness can be accomplished through either physical or chemical means. Physical treatment typically employs an ion exchange resin where hardness cations are preferentially exchanged with sodium ions attached to a resin surface. A depiction of the ion exchange process is shown in the below image for different calcium hardness species. Iron and manganese are more effectively removed through either physical or chemical oxidation. In this case, soluble metal cations are oxidized by either aerating them mechanically or using a chemical oxidant such as potassium permanganate. The insoluble metal is then able to precipitate out of solution and can be filtered out of the water. Chemical treatment of calcium and magnesium hardness employs the use of a base such as lime and sometimes soda ash to raise the pH of the solution. Precipitation of calcium and magnesium occurs under moderately basic conditions, so a recarbonation phase is needed after chemical treatment to lower the pH to an acceptable range. In large-scale municipal water treatment plants, hardness is traditionally treated through the addition of a chemical agent. Iron and manganese may be removed alongside calcium and magnesium if they are present at relatively low concentrations. But if they are present, present in appreciable concentrations, these species are better removed by oxidation and filtration techniques. Depending on the type and amount of hardness, different chemicals may be needed for softening. Carbonate and magnesium hardness is precipitated by the addition of hydrated lime, while calcium non-carbonate hardness is precipitated by the addition of soda ash. The main mechanism of removal for calcium and magnesium species relies on the relative insolubilities of calcium carbonate and magnesium hydroxide at a high pH. Soda ash is required for calcium non-carbonate removal to introduce additional alkalinity for precipitation of calcium carbonate. Non-carbonate calcium hardness cannot precipitate out of solution without this additional alkalinity. The treatment equations for water hardness are shown here in order of when the reaction occurs. Usually hydrated lime, also called calcium hydroxide, is first added in excess to remove carbonate and magnesium hardness. The lime reacts preferentially with dissolved carbon dioxide to produce a calcium carbonate precipitate. No hardness is removed from this reaction. We will briefly go over each reaction, starting with two. One mole of lime reacts with one mole of calcium bicarbonate to precipitate two moles of calcium carbonate. Three. Two moles of lime reacts with one mole of magnesium bicarbonate to precipitate two moles of calcium carbonate and one mole of magnesium hydroxide. Four, one mole of magnesium sulfate reacts with one mole of lime to precipitate one mole of magnesium hydroxide. And five, one mole of soda ash reacts with one mole of calcium sulfate to precipitate one mole of car calcium carbonate. The last two reactions in six and seven illustrate the recarbonation step required for pH adjustment. CO2 is bubbled through solution and reacts with one mole of excess lime to produce one mole of calcium carbonate. This calcium carbonate in turn reacts with CO2 to further reduce carbonate to bicarbonate, thus reducing the pH of the solution to a near neutral state. Calcium chloride and magnesium chloride follow the same reactions for their sulfate counterparts shown on lines 5 and 4 respectively. In the case of calcium and magnesium chloride, two chloride ions replace the position of the sulfate ion.